dark, they travel to freedom. Broken and worn, but they once kept on in the moonlight. The moonlight. We oh, wish that one day we'll find the one to keep. The journey is an endless one to the same love, the same love. You're here. Yeah. Our next guest is amazing. He. <laughs> Let's just bring on Nathan Fillion! All right. Hello. Nathan. Hey, everybody. Say hi to Seattle. Hi, Seattle. When I was a kid, true story, my family, we went on a... You my family, we went on a... I pulled the tooth. We went on a, on a road trip. I'm from Edmonton. We came west to the coast, and we came down, and we were on our way to Disneyland. I was a baby, I didn't know anything. But my mom turned around to the back seat and she said to my older brother Jeff, Jeff, we're going to Disneyland. No, no, sorry. <laughs> New story. He, she goes, Jeff, we're going to Seattle. And he said, I don't want to Seattle, I want to see Mickey. <laughs> True story, he's never lived it down. But well, you know what, Seattle? I don't want to see Mickey, I want to see you. That's right. Of all, okay, Entertainment Weekly 2011 called you a geek god. You what? are a geek. You had that awesome picture on the cover. What is that, I mean, what does it feel like? Did you ever imagine, you know, back in the Firefly days, back in the Captain days, that this would be your life and you would embody that term? I'm, I'm, so, I'm so happy. I'm so happy about all this. I'm really not built for anything else. <laughs> um, people say, hey, if you weren't acting and doing all that, what would you do? <laughs> Probably starve, guys. <laughs> I'd be a hobo. <laughs> I'd be the guy at the on-ramp of the freeway with a sign that says, will food for work, and then arrows switching them. Well, you were on one of my very first conventions. Did we meet like in Blackpool, England? I think England? we met like 15 years ago in, in Blackpool. In Blackpool, England. It was like one of my very first conventions ever. It was a Buffy con that they said, yeah. <clears throat> they said, let's throw a couple of these Firefly guys in here. We don't know how that's going to work out, but we'll see. And, <laughs> and it worked there. out. Yeah. It were... worked out. So when you, okay, let's go back to Firefly. Let's, let's start there. We got to. I mean, when you, right? When you got cast... Any idea, any inkling, even after the series got canceled, you know, after airing the 11 wait, wait, episodes. Wait, wait, what? I know. Spoiler. Any idea that there would be such longevity and such a connection to the material? Okay, certainly no idea. Um, I was the guy walking around. I mean, we were getting kicked around by the network a lot. You all know the story. Uh, I was the guy saying to the cast and the crew, guys, don't worry. This is a great show. The show's freaking awesome. And we're all doing a great job. And we love our job. What could go wrong? That was me. I was that guy. So I wasn't even thinking about, if it ever gets canceled, that wasn't even in my, on my radar. Right? Oh, my God. Surprise. Learned a lot, though. I learned a lot. But then the, uh, then the movie, they, you know. Then we had a movie. Then, and how did, they, how did they broach that subject to you guys? Josh said to us uh, a long time ago, when, can when Firefly got canceled, when he told us, hey guys, the show's canceled, he said, I will not rest until I find a new home for Firefly. And, um, and he did it. He did that, right? 
Joss Whedon can do things. Well, and he, he really, he can. And he took care of you guys after the show got canceled, too. He put you on Buffy. He put, put me on Buffy, yeah. put Adam and, and Gina on Angel. Yeah. Yeah, he really, he, yeah. He, he takes care of his own. Yeah, he's good people. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then, I mean, your resume is incredible. Dr. Horrible sing-along right. blog. <laughs> Much to do about nothing. I mean, do you have, like, yeah, a standout Joss project or was, you know... I actually, I don't know how many of you guys know this, I actually auditioned for Angel, to play Angel in Buffy. I auditioned for Buffy, for the role of Angel. And I told Joss, and he goes, I don't, I don't remember meeting you. And I said, no, no. I never made it to Joss Whedon. I got cut out of the early. Um, <laughs> they said, yeah, we're going to go handsome with the role. That's fine. That's fine. That's wrong. That's, That's wrong. wrong. It's wrong to say it, but it's, it's true. Um, uh, what was the question? Well, there wasn't, I mean, we just kind of want to talk about all your Joss work and everything. So yeah. it was just, you know, let's talk about Dr. Horrible's sing-along. What was, what was, you know? I missed out on Buffy and I said, man, I really would have liked to have done a Joss Whedon show. And I got Firefly and I said, wow, Buffy did a, a musical. I guess I missed out on that. And then we did Dr. Horrible. And uh, I, I just, everything I kind of missed out on, I actually got a chance to do because of Joss. Joss. Joss is boss, right? Joss did everything. I actually, a couple weekends ago, if I can, if I can drop a name, is that all right? Is it cool? Yes. Thanks. Um, I, I got to do some work on a, a little uh, crowdfunded thing we're calling The Undead. Anybody have any idea about this? Oh, God, you're in for a treat. <laughs> anyway, as we're doing it, I, I'm going to have my picture taken by Gary Oldman. He's going to come in and do this process with a tin-type photo where you get your picture taken on glass. You have to hold still like the old-timey. It's an 1800s camera. You have to hold still for 10 seconds. Don't blink. <laughs> They've got a contraption in the back to keep your head still so they can keep the focus. It's really quite a, an amazing process. And I got to meet Gary Oldman. He comes in. The first thing he says to me is, Hey, Dr. Horrible. <laughs> I was like, Joss Whedon. <laughs> You've done it again. He's a career maker. I mean, he really is. He has, he has that knack and that eye for picking like really amazing actors and putting them in projects early on. And then we get the advantage of being able to work with such amazing, wonderful people. He hires really cool people. Exactly. Really nice people. He's a cool dude. He's Do you great. remember one time there was a convention that was supposed to be held in uh, Burbank and it got canceled, but everybody was already there? They go, hey, welcome. It's not going. Her husband, your husband was it had the had yeah. the, the, the facility, a restaurant, a restaurant over in on what where is that? On, yeah, on in Hollywood? Hollywood, yeah. Husband had a restaurant in Hollywood. She goes, Everybody, come on down to my restaurant. And she invited the convention <laughs> to her restaurant. And we all came down. We all went down. We all kind of made something of it. We, we made sure that there well, was... Well, that's, what that's what's still amazing about the Firefly cast, you know? I mean, that was just happen circumstance that, you know, we were able to do that. But it's you guys that came and you guys that have always connected with the fans, you know? And, and you know, been able, been accessible in a way, even before social media. I think that's part of what, you know, people really still resonate with the show. I think we all have one thing in common. We all have super good taste in sci-fi. I think so, I think too. Because that. <laughs> Well, this hour is about you guys. So I know you guys are super excited to talk to Nathan. Um, line up in the aisles. We're going to have people with mics there. And, um, <laughs> and we'll try to get through as many questions as we can. Uh, don't, don't stampede each other on your way up. <laughs> and why don't we start over here? Are you ready, sir? You ready? Where you're from and then ask a question. Hi, Nathan. We, uh, we met earlier. Yes. I, I belly laughed. Yeah. <laughs> I've honestly never seen this particular ensemble. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Kudos. Kudos, sir. I, I, I am Ben. I'm from Maple Valley. Uh, my wife dared me to ask this, wear, wearing this, uh, because there seems to be some confusion as to exactly what the hammer is. I don't think there's any confusion. I can tell you what it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually... My real question is, 
what, uh, what career do you think you would have chosen or ended up in <laughs> if acting would not have panned out? I was actually, I was uh, three months away from my degree. I was going to be a, a high school teacher. Can you imagine that? I have a, a very poor concept of time. Um, I, uh, I'm incredibly forgetful. Schedules uh, escape me. Uh, my parents, when I graduated from high school, my parents said, hey, we want to get you a little something. What do you want for, for graduating? I said, I want a watch that tells me what day it is. She goes, oh, so like the date. I said, no, no, I don't care about the date. I don't know if it's Monday or Tuesday or what, and I don't want people knowing that about me. So I needed to say, Wednesday. Like that's, the, that's what I wanted. That's, I'm just, I, I would not be suited. I'd be a terrible teacher. I think in class, I think doing the thing, I think that'd be dandy. But there's a lot of like the prep government work. instituted, yeah. you know, like responsibilities. You gotta, you gotta do something about this guy. You can't just kind of wing it. Yeah, I think, I think you're well suited for acting. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Oh, Captain, my Captain. As you were. <laughs> uh, my name is Garrett. I'm from Ellensburg, Washington. You're uh, Slytherin. Really? Um, my question is, uh, so over the last few cons in the years, you've slightly, like slipped in little fun notes to like Gina Torres and Jewel and stuff like that. So I was just curious, what's been your best like practical joke and what's been the best practical joke played on you? What's Ooh. been the best practical joke? Here's, here's what I always say, guys. I get a reputation for playing practical jokes because I've played a couple practical jokes. In your time. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you don't want a reputation as a practical joker. Because if anyone gets a practical joke played on them, they think it's you. And if anyone has a practical joke to play, they figure you deserve it. So not a reputation you want. Um, I had an answer for this because something happened recently. I'm trying to remember what it was. I'll tell you this, though. Something happened to Adam Baldwin while we were, playing, uh, we were doing Serenity. And he put gummy worms on my windshield wipers on, on my, my car on a hot summer day in Los Angeles. Oh. It's like, what is this? It's, what is this? It took so long to clean up that sugary mess. I said, what have you done? And he goes, well, wasn't that you that did the uh, thing to me? I said, no. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And he goes, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. I did, however, um, have a, an old calendar that uh, Alan Tudyk's neighbors from when he, where he was growing up had a bunch of old photos of Alan's family and they made up a calendar for him and sent it to him uh, when he was uh, first looking for a place to, to stay or at one point he was staying at my place for I don't know why he was watching my cat I was out of town he left this calendar at my house so I took it <laughs> and I saved it for years <laughs> Because I think that was when we were doing Firefly. He was moving from New York to L.A. That's what happened. He left it at my house, and I saved it. And when we did Serenity, I took the goofiest child pictures of Alan Tudyk there was and had them blown up and posted all over the bar scene in Serenity, which was uh, that particular day was Alan's birthday. That was his birthday. And I said, this is gold. He'll have no idea. Because... This is an inside job, right? From his childhood. He'll figure it's somebody. He comes into the bar and he goes, what? Where did, was this Nathan? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Here's another one. John Huertas. Here's another one. John Huertas told me, hey, when I was a kid, I used to go to church and I would take the communion, the little wafers they give you. This is the body of Christ. It's all big and official. He'd go in his pocket. And he'd take him to school and he'd, snack on him in class and I'm laughing at him and I said how hard would it be I get on Amazon they sell them like boxes of a thousand a piece right you can get the body of Christ easy <laughs> so I slip into his dressing room one day when he's working and I unpackage these things they come in rows like crackers and I pour them all into his pockets of his sweater <laughs> he had like a cardigan and his pockets were stuffed with a thousand of these wafers the next day I see him and we're chatting in the morning, we're just talking, I'm wondering how I can kind of get his reaction for what happened, or get him to talk about what happened. Right. I said, so, and he says, so it was you? <laughs> <laughs> no I chance. I couldn't keep a straight face. Yeah. I said, what? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> and go. he said yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Tom from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And uh, last year we saw Jewel, and she said you babysat our dog and I renamed did. it What Dog? Uh, so we wanted to know if you've ever babysat our pet and named it a different name. Uh, well, actually, as a matter of fact, I, well, Jewel was, you know, out of country. I don't know where she went. Um, and I had her dog. And I just, just, let, just to let her know everything's okay, I'd send her little pictures or little videos and whatnot when the dog's walking, when the dog's playing. Just, just to let her know. Dog's okay every day. Dog's okay. Three, three pictures a day. The dog's okay. But Don't I would worry. say things like, hey, it's me. Hope you're having a great time. Hope everything's good. Hoping the weather's been cooperating for you. Also, how do you usually get your dog off the roof? <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, uh, I would say, like, how many eggs do you usually give your dog? Uh, and then I would say things like, yeah, I changed your dog's name to what dog? That way, when the, someone says, hey, what's your dog's name? You can say, what dog? Uh, I said I changed your dog's name to Skid Marks. There's a story. I'll tell you later. One of the names was, uh, oh, I sent a video. A dog, I'm, I'm down on the carpet. Her dog's chewing on some toy. And the dog's name is Teddy. And I'm going, Teddy, 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 Teddy. Teddy, 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 Teddy. Dogs doesn't pay attention. Nothing. Just chewing, just chewing. I go, horse pejorities. And he looks up. <laughs> so I just sent a little note. I said, I changed your dog's name again and sent that video. She comes back to pick up her dog. Uh, we're all sitting in the living room. We're talking about their trip. The dog's very excited to see them. It's really great. She's petting the dog. She goes, what is this? Every time I changed the dog's name, I had a new dog tag made. <laughs> and I put them all on there. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, hi. Hi, my name is Benjamin Lemke, and I'm from Oregon, Portland. Very nice to meet you, Benjamin. <laughs> um, I wonder what's your favorite TV show and movie that you are not in. Oh. That's a good question. I'm going to have to say right now, it's so super fresh, and I'm really thinking hard about it a lot. The Walking Dead is my favorite show right now. I am really attached to that show. I'm really attached. It, uh, I think because of the job we are in, I think mm -hmm. entertainment becomes a little odd. Uh, we, all of us, don't have infinite time to watch every show there is. So we have to be kind of picky about what we watch. There's so, somebody, there was somebody on one of the Firefly videos who actually said, the, 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 done the impossible. There was a guy who said, I don't have a lot of time. I have to pick my entertainment very carefully. And I, ever since he said that, I said, you know what? I got to do that too. <laughs> so when I watch a show, if the writing is bad, I get distracted. If the acting is bad, I get distracted. If the costume, if, I, if anything is bad, I get distracted. I can't be taken on a journey. I can't escape. The Walking Dead, I escape entirely. I get wound up, I stand up, I go, oh my God, what are you doing? I, I, I yell out at the TV, I get so riled up, I love it so much. And any time I meet any of those guys from Walking Dead, any of those actors or writers or anybody's on it, the showrunners, they're all so nice. They're all so nice and they say, yeah, we have a good time. I know they're tortured out there. They're it's, definitely tortured. It's I mean, the that's... night, it's the cold, it's the heat, it's the humidity, it's the mud, it's the gross, it's the, I know it's torture. And a lot of, and not, they're not from Atlanta, so they're, they're displaced as well. I know they go through a great deal to make that show. I really enjoy that show. Movies, I think I've been watching a lot lately, Edge of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I've watched that movie so many times, but I honestly, I can't tell you how many times I've watched it. That's right, the joke is because in the movie it keeps repeating the movie. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent that was question. a great Thank question. You, Thank you. Yes. Hi, I'm Kathy from Portland, Oregon. Um, what was your favorite Firefly line that you've said? My favorite Firefly line ever was when uh, Malcolm Reynolds in the, very, in the pilot kicks open the box to see what's inside and the smoke clears and there's this little naked girl inside and he goes, huh. Just 
just nailed it. I mean, nailed it. You read a script and you go, I, I, "This is the character I'm going to play. This is going to be something that defines him." Right? There's going to be a couple of moments that defines him. And I think one of those moments was uh, there's a lady hiding behind a horse and she was trying to kill Malcolm Reynolds and he shot her horse. He fell on her. Like, that's a great moment. And when he's saying, there's something in this box that you don't want us to see, he's got all these ideas of what it could possibly be. Uh -huh. And when he kicks it open and there's a little lady in there. Huh. Not that, what he was expecting. That's perfect Joss dialogue, too, so though. I mean, yeah. he nails it. He yeah. nails that, like, that place in between, like, too structured and totally unbelievable. There's things that people say on TV, and then there's things that people say in real life. And I think that's what Joss kind of does, is he does the, the real life stuff. Yep. Excellent question. Great question. Thank you. Yes? I'm Sarah. I'm from Boise, Idaho. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Don't you know. <laughs> um, I have a two-part, actually, if that's okay. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm looking at these monitors and that your face is on the monitors. The camera loves you. I'm look so at excited. that. Boom. <laughs> you do. You look great. Um, well, that goes well with my first question then. Could I have a hug? We can't do hugs oh, right now. I'm so sorry. Yeah, 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 we can't okay. do them right now. Eh, they made excuses for you. Someone got proposed to, so I decided. And they got right. hugs, so I was right. like, I'm going to do it. Okay. Um, anyways, so if you could be on either Star Wars or if you could be on Doctor Who as a companion, what would you choose to be? That's interesting. Hmm. And if you choose Star Wars, good or bad? Are you on the dark side or the? I, I think, I think I would have to go. Well, that's a tough question. I'm going to go with Star Wars. Okay. And I really think I could totally rock the dark side. I really do. <laughs> A really quiet. Well, somebody needs way. a new father. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you. I feel you. like I just need to stand here now. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Hi, I'm Eric. I'm from uh, Woodenville, Washington. And Castle is my favorite TV show. I love that show. <laughs> um, and I was wondering what your favorite part is about portraying Castle and if you see elements of yourself in the character. My favorite part is, uh, and I think one of the more challenging, I don't know how challenging I can say acting it. It's really hard, guys. No, we're pretending. <laughs> one of the, I think, more challenging parts of my job is actively believing in all the crap that Castle believes in. <laughs> guys! Aliens. For real this time, though. Totally ninjas. Ninja zombies and a genie. A genie and an angel with a ninja buddy. Guys, I'm serious this time. It could actually, that's kind of the weird, one of the weirder parts of my job. Um, parts of myself in Castle, my brother once told me, do you really think, when I watch, when I watch Castle, I really, I watch you a lot being yourself. I watch you being you. Do you really think it's fair getting paid for that? And you said, absolutely. I, to which I said, here's the thing, Jeff. If I told you I want you to wear these clothes, I want you to stand here, I want you to walk over to here. By the time you get from here to here, I want you to say these two lines. When you get here, there's four more lines, but you have to say it like this. Be yourself. Could you do it? <laughs> My brother's a terrible actor. Thank you. Yes, hi. Hi, my name's Brian, I'm from Chico, California. My question is, um, being a small part of the Marvel Universe as, a, uh, as a, a big character in Guardians of the Galaxy in the prison, would you wanna join Marvel as a superhero? And if you would, who would you wanna be? Here's the part where I answer this question and then it gets plastered all over the internet. <laughs> Nathan wants to be this character. Guess what, guys? They don't hire fan favorites. <laughs> Fan favorites don't get the gigs. So every time y'all do that, you nix another part for me. <laughs> so thanks for that, reporters. And they, never, and they never say the part where he just says, you know, I don't really want this to go out on the internet, but they don't put that part in there. They don't say that. They just go, guess what, everybody? Nathan wants it. He demands it. He's going to get it. He's in negotiations. That's not true. Um, I, here's the thing. We're running out of superheroes. We're running out of superheroes. 
It's not a lie. We're running out. But there's about 50 villains per hero. There you go. Mm-hmm. That'll work. I don't know. I'll put, my, I'll put my hand in the hat and I'll pull one out. I'll go, good. I'll be this one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, hi. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm from Portland, Oregon. And first off, I want to say I'm sad to hear about Doctor Who versus Star Wars. So, but I'm going to let it go. Doctor Who should have had a lightsaber. That's all. <laughs> he has a sonic screwdriver. I know, okay. but when I was a kid, I was like, sonic screwdriver, lightsaber. Sonic screwdriver, lightsaber. Okay. But my question actually pertains to Dr. Horrible Sing Along. Is there any possibility that there will be a sequel? Absolutely there's a possibility. Okay. This is something I've, uh, you can't really, you can't doubt Joss Whedon. You can never doubt him. Yeah. And, and that came at a really interesting time, too. Like, yeah. that was kind of when, wasn't there a strike going on when... Dr. That Horrible, yeah. Dr. Horrible was in response to the, the writer's the, strike. The, writer's right? strike. the writers were saying, hey, you producers aren't being cool with us. You're making all the money and we're doing all the work. Come on. <laughs> And uh, the writers started producing things on their own and putting them on striketv.net. That was the whole idea. Right. And then we said, let's do Dr. Horrible. The strike ended. Joss said, let's do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And we did it in six days. And off we went. Boom, we did that. Uh, we all want to do another one. Yeah. Even Felicia, I, but we're yeah. not going to let her. I would love it. And I would love to see that. And I also want to say thank you for being in Drunk U- U- um, drunk History. I did Drunk History. Yeah. I love that show. I love that it's show. It's a great show. Oh, my God. And by the way, if you think lip syncing to a drunk guy is easy, it's not easy. <laughs> That's not easy to do. And, I don't, and if you watch that show carefully, they do a lot of long shots where one guy can't beat the screw up. Yeah. It was hard to do. It's, Those guys yeah. are really good at their job. And Derek Waters, who said the whole thing, he's so cool. They're all so nice. They're so great. Yes. Hi, I'm Shelly from Bellingham. And my question is about the um, Mal cameo on Castle when you had the costume. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Whose idea was that? And what was your reaction when you found out they were doing it? That was Terry Miller. That was anytime you see it, like if it has to have a costume, if it's part of the show, it's, it's one of the writers throwing that stuff in. Uh, and that was, uh, the, the, the writer for that episode was Terry Miller, and my reaction was, thank you. <laughs> that was great. It was great. And, and we really, that really started something as far as we being self-aware enough that the, knowing our audience knows that we are a cast of actors that have had other projects and done other things. We did that particular episode, we had a Halloween party, and everybody dressed as a well, John Huertas and Seamus Dever dressed as roles they had previously played. Uh, John Huertas was in uh, Generation Kill. He was a big old Marine. He was all Marined out in his Generation Kill outfit. Uh, Seamus Dever was on a soap opera. He played a doctor where he, he, was, he was shot and killed. So he had a doctor with a, like, a wound on him. Like, <laughs> we all did that. That was really fun. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. Yes. Hi, uh, Jeanette Ingiosi from Wilmington, Delaware. I just want to say thank you for the photo and being a part of the honeymoon for me and my husband. My question is, I followed your career from one life to live all the way up. I've loved everything you've been in. How do you compare shooting a soap to Castle? I mean, they're both television, but I know one life to live is a beast in itself. We've had a, a number of uh, soap opera alumni mm-hmm. on, on Castle. I, 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 I meet guys all the time. I say, hey, not for nothing, we met at a soap opera soap opera softball charity tournament ages ago. These, these guys who have been in the business, the industry for so many years, and they're so kind and they're so sweet. I know when a soap alumnus comes to Castle, there's nothing you can throw at them that will throw them off their game. They'll handle anything. When I first started doing one-hour dramas, anything other than soaps, when I got out of soaps, my, my big surprise was, you guys take forever. I could have two shows done by now. <laughs> we have to work very fast and very hard. And, and they'll say, okay, here's the script. Here's the scene we just did. We're running short on time. The show is kind of edited as you go. We have to cut this line, this line, these two lines. This line melds into this line and cut this line. Do you need a rehearsal? <laughs> and you just look and you go, eh, eh. Okay, got it. And we would bang it out. It was like, I liken it to push-ups. Yeah. The more you do, the easier they get. 
unless you have a torn bicep tendon, which is why, guys, no, no, not doing any push-ups today. Thank you. That's a great Thank question. You. Yes, hi. My name is Jody Riemann, and I'm from Kenmore, Washington, and I was wondering, I have two questions. One, can you wiggle your wig? I can. <laughs> guys, I wear a hairpiece. I don't know if you knew this. <laughs> David Letterman, David Letterman loves that gag. And was Cactoy Jim written for you? Uh, no. Yes. Why not? <laughs> yes. Let's say yeah. Let's, yes. No. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm Ryan from Pulse Hill, Washington. Hello, Ryan. Uh, really quick shout out to Shannon, who's Shannon. somewhere Hi. back there. Shannon. Hi. Shouting to you. Um, so I was wondering, like, for Castle, what is your favorite casket moment? Favorite casket moment. Here's, here's the weird thing about doing a show for eight years. I don't remember anything. <laughs> I don't remember anything about... So if someone says, hey, you remember the episode where you did this? I'll go, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did that. I did that. Firefly, way easier. There's only 13 you got to remember. <laughs> Do you have a favorite? Um, definitely the wedding. Definitely. Totally. Did it look real? Because it was all indoors. Really? Right? Oh my God, I shattered your dreams. <laughs> it was like, it was real, I think it was real grass, but they, they brought the grass in because they had a shot of the grass. They wanted it to look real as we walked up to what was a green screen and they put a sunset in later. They had some, a couple of, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, they put in, uh, they bring in these big giant fans that are very quiet. Uh, it's making a very quiet sound. So when you're inside and your hair is moving just a little bit, your brain, as you're watching it, says, oh, they're outside. You don't really notice it, but your brain notices it. And then they put in a little kind of sunset at the back. Some people saw it. Some people didn't understand. Obviously, it worked for you. Nice. Thank you. That was my favorite moment, too, by the way. <laughs> Yes, hi. Hello, my name is Ryan. I'm in from San Francisco. Let's, um, just, let's just take a little moment here to look at Ryan's outfit. It's very, very nice. My, my parasol's over in my seat. <laughs> um, back shortly after the Caleb run on Buffy, well before Fire, uh, Serenity came out, you came into a nightclub that I was hosting in Chicago with Jim Rose. Yes! And... <laughs> I got a chance to introduce myself and talk with you, and it's like, oh, yeah, no, I recognize you from TV. And you asked me, was it Caleb? And I said, no, no, from Firefly. You reverse fanboyed me. What's your favorite episode? Who's your favorite character? Yeah, right. I said at the time, Kaylee. I just wanted to prove it. There you go, there you go. You proved it. And my question is, do you still have the door prize? Does he still have what? The door prize from uh, that night. I don't think so. That's all right. Huh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And you look great. Yeah. <laughs> yes, hi. Hi, my name's John. I'm from here in Seattle. And uh, first of all, I don't care what they say, you are ruggedly handsome. <laughs> Wait, who, who said something different? Was it Nolan North? Anyway, so my question is... Um, so, my question is actually, in Alan Tudyk's uh, Con Man... You show up uh, frequently as the uh, somewhat obnoxiously successful uh, friend of Alan Tudyk. And my question is, how close to real life is that when you're standing next to a pool, wearing your Hawaiian shirts, you know, and a fedora sometimes? Well, I mean, Alan's... What, I'm curious, when did Alan approach you about doing Con Man? Like, how far... Years ago. Into the, yeah. You've been talking about this for years. Um, but, but is your question, how close is Jack Moore's life to my real life? Yes. Yes. Well, I think you're real. You're, you're, he's I, an exaggerated. I, yeah, certainly he's exaggerated. He's got a fancier house. I have a lovely home. <laughs> I stole it. There was, a, there was a recession. I don't know if you knew this. There was a recession, and I had a job. So people were having a very hard time, and everybody's unloading their houses, and yeah. the result was I could finally afford a house in L.A., <laughs> So I have, I have a lovely home that I look in my backyard. It's very peaceful. There's a lot of trees. And I just kind of 
<sighs> but I'm never there to enjoy it. That's the difference. I'm never home. I, uh, I, I've, got, I've got one more day of castle, and then we start our hiatus. Yay. And I can't wait to spend time with my house. He's like an old friend I never get to see. <laughs> I got a nice... I got a brand new doormat I can't wait to put out. I just got it. I said, I'm not going to put it out until hiatus starts, and that's going to be Tuesday. And it says, beat it, hippie. <laughs> can't wait. I love it. Thank you. So Con Man was amazing. It was awesome. You guys had that in the works for a long time. He's been talking concept. about it for ages, and he finally wrote it. And then when we basically put PJ in charge and said, let's get this thing rolling, it, it happened so very quickly after that. Yeah, I'm I really mean, the quite amazed. Crowdfunding like blew up. It's like you hit your goal in like this a day or something. Entirely like a new half business day. model. Those things like the writer strike and having to deal with producers and this kind of ugly part of a business. Sometimes it's ugly. Sometimes it's fantastic. I don't want to put a paint producers in a bad light. It can be nasty sometimes when you're dealing with a major conglomerate. They don't care so much about you as they do hundreds of millions of dollars. That makes a lot of sense to me. But there's a new business model turning over where if people want to see something, they can actually reach out and affect that and make some changes and make something happen and make a project go. It's really quite fascinating and thrilling to be a part of it. It is. Yeah. It definitely is. Yes. Hi, Nate. How you doing? I'm Vegas. Jake. Hi, my name is uh, Sherry. I'm from Las Vegas. Um, first of all, Nate, I uh, just want to tell you I'm retiring next month. Nice. I am. Uh, I'm stoked. Um, no more people shooting at you. No. She's a policeman. She's oh. a police lady. Wow. Tell everybody that. Thank you. God, you, you know what? You are just the coolest guy ever. This guy. This guy. Um, my question is this. Um, obviously, as an actor, you can't get tattoos, or even if you wanted to. But if you got a Firefly tattoo, would you? And what would it be? No, no. I no. I said maybe he if, has one. And what? Um. Well, tell you what. If I. I I don't know if I'd get a Firefly tattoo. It's a little, it seems a little meta. I saw one today, uh, yesterday, it was pretty crazy. It was, it was Serenity with the, the, the back end at the top and the, 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 the front at the bottom and, and the two things. And, and Malcolm Reynolds kind of straddled over it like a cross, like he was crucified on it. He was going to hang his head. I'm like, wow, man, it's dark, but it's nice. But <laughs> I think if I was to get a tattoo, it would be, I would get Think Fast and I'd have it on the bottom of my foot. And if someone wanted to see it, I'd kick him in the face. <laughs> just, just, I kind of thought you were going to say that. So I took a hit for the team this week. And oh, on Thursday, you do? I got... Look at you! Whoa. Says, uh, big damn hero, Serenity Valley, and Serenity right in the middle. <laughs> I knew you'd nice. like it. Oh, man. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, that's the one I'd get. <laughs> but on my foot, and then i kick people in the face. <laughs> Yes. Hi, I'm Jessica, and I happen to be honored to share your birthday, March 27th. That's right. Um, so, nice. So my question is, what's a uh, favorite birthday gift that you've gotten? Favorite birthday gift? What's a favorite birthday gift? I got some nice stuff. This, uh, I, I really needed uh, one of those barbecue forks that tells you the temperature. It's a thermometer Ooh, on the a barbecue meat where, fork. Yeah, because yeah, I don't like overcooking a steak. Boy, it just breaks my heart. It, you yeah. go get like, give me the nice, give me a nice thick, give me one of those, and then you overcook it. Oh, it's just no one to blame but yourself. So I got one of those forks that tells me where. Michelle got me that. She's here somewhere. Where's Michelle? 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 <laughs> Michelle's back there? Stand up, Michelle. I mean it. There you go, Michelle. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for that question. Yes. Hi. Hi. So I'm Gina, and I'm from Washington also. Uh, if your Buffy characters could have been in a musical episode, what would they have sang about, and how would it have sounded? Well, Glory would have sung about herself. <laughs> <laughs> and it would have sounded fabulous. I think uh, Caleb's song would be something very lyrical and poetic, and sound really beautiful, but he'd be like saying some really creepy stuff. <laughs> but he'd be like saying it all nice like. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hello, Nathan. Hello. So my question is... Future Mrs. Captain yes, Malcolm Reynolds. What are, you, what are you doing for the next 50 years of your life? I think, well, I think evidently. <laughs> no, 
Um, what I wanted to ask, and I have to tell you, walking around Comic-Con in this wedding dress, I have gotten more reaction from women because we love you. They all are rooting me on. I'm going to do you one better. You know what you could do? You can get a bunch of ribbons made up just depending on who you're standing in front of. You can have, like, Norman Reedus. And just, just tear off the appropriate ribbon. No, my heart Hold belongs to you. That's, true. That's exactly right. Who needs that guy? But, <laughs> my question is, if you could go back and remake a classic movie, what classic movie would you remake? Uh, if I could go back and remake a classic movie. Hmm. I almost said Jaws, but that's just, who, don't touch that. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's too classic. Yeah. To, you got to kind of go further back, I think. Or maybe not. You want, you want like a classic. classic. Casablanca. I think I, I did a sci-fi class, Casablanca one time on the Outer Limits. I really did. It was really, really cool. I could see you in Maltese Falcon. I, ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Thank well, you. Thank you so much. And Thank really you. seriously, what are you doing for the next 50 years? I'm single. You I'm, look great. I'm Thank 45. You. I hope I don't last that long. <laughs> Honestly, I want to cap out at 80 before things start falling off me. Well, that, that sounds fine to me. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. Hi. Hi, my name's Gwen. I'm from Seattle. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Gwen. Is that your question? Uh, yes. No, okay, good. Tag, you're it's a two parter. It. Dang it. Um, I was just wondering if we could trade jokes. Do you have a good I have a great joke? one. Okay. What is a pirate's favorite letter? You'd think, but it's the C they love. <laughs> love it. It's a good one. You ready to go after that one? Let me hear you. Yeah, um, yeah. This one's kind of a verbal pun. I hope it's not too much. How much does a chicken cost? How much does a chicken cost? A like... bucket? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not bad. Thanks. Nice. Air Thank you. Five. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, so I'm Acacia from Seattle. Hi. Um, first off, thanks for coming. I've been waiting years for you to be at Emerald Thanks City. for having me, you guys. I'm having a ball. Yay. So um, one of my favorite movies is Slither. So I was wondering if you'd talk about working with James Gunn. James Gunn's really cool. James Gunn is really cool. James Gunn... When you have to make a movie, there's a schedule, you gotta keep it. There's a lot of pressure on a guy like the director. Less pressure so much on guys like me, yeah. more so on James Gunn. So when things started to fall apart and the stress started getting really, James would get really funny. Not like, like he'd be like, ha ha ha. Like he'd be making cracking jokes, making everybody laugh through the stress that was crushing them. He would make light of it and I think People who, I, I love watching people in stressful situations because it kind of tells you who they are. I lose it. <laughs> I'm terrible in a stressful situation. I, I, I'm terrible. James Gunn, a real leader, a real leader. And he just, he loves having a good time and he loves what he does. He just loves it. Oh, I love that guy. And I it love shows. That guy. It yeah, it shows, shows it right? It shows. shows. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, he's amazing. Thank you. Great question. Can I tell you guys something? I go to a lot of conventions, and you kind of—I can you, you see kind of culturally what an area of the country or another country is like based on you know the people there. Kind of like East Coast, New Yorkers are really cool. They're really nice people. They can be very polite. At the same time, when they ask you for something, it's like they're mad at you. Hey, can you sign this for me? I know, like, he's really cool and he's saying some really nice things, but it always, it kind of sounds a little abrupt. Like, a he's little a little angry. It's a little weird. It's just a little, it's culturally different. Everybody's so pleasant here. Everybody's so pleasant and nice. It's just the, kind of the greatest things about conventions are all right here, right now. I'm just having a really good time, just so you know. Just I wanted to cover that. Is it on? Oh, jeez. Hi, my name is Jared from Oak Harbor. Uh, I've been to a couple of conven conventions with Jewel. <laughs> And people ask, uh, how come she's not on Castle? And she says she boycotts, and you have to ask Nathan. So my question is, how come Jewel's not on Castle? You'd like to see Jewel on Castle? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
And there you go. Thank you. There you go. You I got a little surprise ask. for you. Jewel's going to be on Castle. Hi. Hi, I'm oh. Jessica. I'm from Federal Way, Washington. And I'm a huge theater nerd, and literally everyone in the theater sings Dr. Horrible 24-7. And I was wondering if you've done theater before Dr. Horrible, or how you got into singing or stage work. I did a couple of musicals in high school. I was Will Parker in Oklahoma. Oh, Woo! look at you. Uh, I went and I did, I went and I did um, a season of Desperate Housewives and Kyle Ooh. McLaughlin. Whom, I mean, Dune. Oh, my God. Uh, Kyle McLaughlin was also Will Parker in Oklahoma, and he and I would, <laughs> we often sing our song. Anyway, uh, and uh, I, I'm not a grand singer. I'm not, I, you wouldn't catch me on Broadway, but uh, I can carry a tune in a bucket. One of my part-time jobs going through college was uh, karaoke. I was a karaoke host. That's awesome. Yeah, I did a couple singing telegrams for a while. I was doing singing telegrams. Mm -hmm. I did that kind of stuff. Um, so... Training? Eh. <laughs> Not so much. But uh, willingness to get out there and, yeah, mm -hmm. to get out there and do something that I most likely might fail at, uh, that kind of thing I've been doing a lot. <laughs> Especially at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Great question. Yes, hi. Hi, I'm Cheryl from West Palm Beach, Florida. Hi, Cheryl. And you talked before about when you bought your house, the cat came with it. Do you still have the cat? That was a cat that I, I, I got a rental house. That was my rental house. I lived there like 10 years. And she says, it comes with a cat. I said, I'm not a cat fan. I don't like cats. Cut to, she's living inside with me, and she's really cool, and she's really awesome. She lasted, she said, I said, how old? She said, she's 18. I said, oh, good, she's going to be dead. <laughs> She'll die. And she said, just an outside cat, just feed her. I said, okay, no problem. One time I came out, there was a raccoon going at her. I said, oh. get in here. <laughs> And uh, she turned out to be an amazing animal that I really enjoyed. She lasted nine years. Wow. wow. I found a neighbor who had lived in the neighborhood for some time, and she said, oh, that cat was born in your garage and abandoned. And they had a German shepherd who had puppies, so they just took the cat, they just shoved it up against the German shepherd. So the dog weaned her, and... Uh, and the people moved out, and the cat keep came and come and they kept get their cat. They'd bring it back to their house eight blocks away, and the cat would keep coming back to the house. So they just left it there. Aww. But she's still dead. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm uh, Debbie from Portland, Oregon. Hi, Debbie. Before I ask you a question, Claire, I just want to say you were deliciously <laughs> nasty as Glory, and I really enjoy your acting. Thank very you. Much. Um, Nathan, I've got an actor question for you. So you play heroes and anti-heroes and villains. True. And they're all smart asses. Well, yeah, I've, I've got a niche. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Does that attract you to a role? Is there any other pattern that you've noticed how you're attracted to roles or roles that you play? You know, uh, that kind of makes it sound like, next I'm going to try this kind of role. It doesn't really happen quite like that. Most, more so, people say, we've got this role... He's kind of a smart ass, but at the same time, he, he's unlikable, but you wind up liking him anyway. He's got a charm, but don't hang out with him too long because he'll wear on you. Like a Nathan Fillion. <laughs> we need like a Nathan Fillion in there, and that's when they call me, and I go, I would love to have a job, sir. Yes, please. Yeah, that would be, that's more so how it works like that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Angie for Fargo, North Dakota. And I was just wondering, you were talking about uh, One Life to Live, my favorite show when I started watching you. And I was wondering if you'd ever, in season nine, have uh, Dorian or Vicky or Bob Woods on the show? Heck yeah, I would love that. Yeah. Um, I, I, they have a list at, at, uh, at Castle of people I would love to work with. It's an incredibly long <laughs> list. And, you know, they say, hey, look, we can't just hire your friends. It's, there's a law against that. Um, but, uh, yeah, these are people that were incredibly kind to me and continue to be incredibly kind to me. I, One Life to Live was my first big job. 
and I could not have been in a better position at a better time with a better group of people. Those people cared for me, they took me in, and I was a guy who didn't know what I was doing. I, was, I, I turned to the person next to me and say, I, I don't know what that means. I don't know what he's asking to do, I don't understand. And they'd say, yeah, don't worry. All he's saying is this, that's code for he has to go to the bathroom, and then there's, they'd, they'd walk me through everything. Uh, and they took good care of me, inside the job, outside the job. They were always very cool and kind. I could not have had a better experience. Well, because of like the pace that you have to work with, work on at a soap, I mean, it is like an incredible training ground. It could be terrible. It could know? have been terrible. Yeah. It could very easily have been a terrible experience. It was a fantastic experience. I owe those people everything. I went back to my soap. Yeah. They killed off the guy that played my grandfather, Phil Carey, and uh, he had a funeral, and they said, we're going to bring Joey back for like two episodes. Would you do it? I said, heck yeah, let's go. <laughs> and uh, all my friends are looking at me going, I can't believe you came back. This is so great. I thought, why wouldn't I come back? Yeah. This, the, this was the best thing that ever happened to me. This was incredible. I had such a great time. Love the show. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Thank you. But that's what I love about you as an actor and an artist is like you're willing to, you don't judge a project by, you know, the visibility or the cachet, I guess. You're willing to jump in here, jump in here, jump in here, and you have such an interesting resume because Heck, of it. I'll do con man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi, I'm uh, Nathan Caleb Peterson from uh, Vancouver, Washington. And uh, is your name honestly Nathan Caleb? Yeah, do you want to see my driver's license? No, I believe you, but I'm just saying, we what are the you. odds? I know. Uh, and Caleb was one of the most terrifying villains on Buffy, and I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, what was it like going from the witty, smart, you know, funny captain to that, like, dark, evil, satanic preacher? Here was the thing about that. Uh, you kind of get the idea that he's dark and he's evil and he's terrible, terrible, terrible. Joss Whedon sat me down before we did that, and he said, Caleb doesn't think he's a bad guy. Oh, oh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Working with Joss is always a learning experience. I feel like a, I guess an idiot savant without the savant. <laughs> he said, yeah, he thinks he's doing what's right. And because he's so incredibly powerful, he has this confidence that what's right will get done. He's enjoying himself. He's doing what's right. And I thought, wow, man, that's great. Because I, I, I was ready to play this kind of <laughs> I would have missed the mark on that one, but yeah. I think he was like, he was like super guy. He thought he was like the coolest guy in the world. Yeah, that, absolutely. When you tackle a role like that, you can't be judgmental of the role. You have to come at it from like a real perspective. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, Nathan Caleb. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Kylie. Um, I met you yesterday. Yeah. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Um, I'm from Woodenville, and my grandmother uh, is not here, but she wanted me to tell you hi. She's a huge fan of you on Castle. Your grandmother has excellent taste. <laughs> um, and so I have two questions. The first is, have you ever been in a humongous prank war? And the second is, what is your favorite song from Dr. Horrible, and can you sing it for us? Well, I don't think we have time for him to sing. Yeah, we don't have a lot of time song, for singing. What, but... what are my favorite song? It was a there was a bit where uh jeez, oh, I'm trying to remember. What was the song where both I cannot believe my eyes, right? That one. Where where Felicia's singing it and she's leaning her head back on one side of the screen and, and Neil is singing it and singing on the other side of the screen and he, he kind of hits his head back at the right moment where it's a beat and it ends the scene. I thought that was just so perfect. There's, there's great moments in a lot of things. Perfect is really hard to get. I thought that moment was perfect. It was a good moment. I love that. Yeah. And definitely. the pranks, I think we covered that. We I, did. The I tried gummy to be, worms and the... Yeah, yeah, I try not to play too many pranks. Yeah, but not anymore, right? I still play them. You learned your lesson, I try kind not of. not to. Not really. It's hard not to. When you see an opening... Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> it's there for the taking. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard not to plan them for weeks in advance. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Keenan. I'm from Vancouver, BC, not Washington. Canadians. Yep. You know. Um, and who are you dressed as today? I'm kidding. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm an actor just starting out, and there's there's one question that I always want to ask um, actors that I look up to that I admire, and that is, what made you want to act? I was uh, overcompensating for uh, shyness. I was very shy. And in fifth grade, the class clown was sick for a week. Things got awfully quiet. 
I said, I think I'm going to give this a shot. <laughs> you saw an opening. Yeah, yeah, I saw an opening. I went for it. And uh, he came back, and he was like second banana. I was like, <laughs> I was like what's going on, man? He locked it down. Yeah, it was, it was me. I was like, ah, new, there's a new kid in town. Um, you're an actor starting out. You're just doing your thing? Um, yeah, mostly stage so far, getting into extras, commercial stuff. And then... Congratulations, man. <laughs> Keep at it. I hope you, I hope you have a, good, a great time doing it. Yeah. Thank you. A pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Yes, hi. <laughs> hi. Um, my name is... <laughs> um, hi, I'm Michelle, and I am from Kenton, Washington. And thank you so much. I actually met you two years ago at Nerd HQ. We did the smiles, and I gave you a hug, and we took a picture, and I was screaming your name while you were walking down. And it was like, he's leaving. I'm like, oh, my God. But anyway, I just Oh, you. Say, <laughs> That's Michelle, guys. <laughs> but um, I just want to say I love you. I, I told my friend Paul, I said, I don't care what the hell we do. We got to get seats so we can come in here, and I can tell you I love you. You are a tremendous actor. I love Castle. I loved Firefly. Actually, binge watch it. Uh, like maybe once a month. And I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you very much for Aww. everything that you do. That's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's the great thing about conventions is you get to that like face-to-face -face feedback and like yeah. interaction. When we're making a TV show, we're, we're, we're essentially locked in a prison, a windowless yeah. room. You go in in daytime, you come out at nighttime, you've missed the entire day. And there's nobody clapping when you finish your job. Or laughing. And you come or here... Clapping. And people are so great and they're so cool and it just makes me feel really good because I'm really enjoying my job, you guys. I really love what I do. That I come to places like this and you guys say, I'm liking it too. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Becca from the Mill Creek area. Hi, Xander. Hi, Steven. Uh, <laughs> We are all geeking out with you here today. And my question for you is, who have you geeked out about or who would you geek out about meeting? Bruce Campbell. <laughs> totally geeked out. Um, uh, a convention I did ages ago, I, well, the first time I met uh, Norman Reedus and Stephen Yen, totally geeked out. Those guys are really, they really, and Bruce, really put me at ease and kind of brought me down to earth and just, they're normal people. I didn't, I didn't get that, man. I just I'm trying not to sweat too much when they're around. But, uh, yeah, I geek out. I, I mean, people I watch and, and they take me away and they, I just, a journey. People, I, I steal their work. They do some great stuff and I go do it on my show next week. Like that's a, I, I geek out about those people. Yeah. That's a great question. Thank you. And you look great. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. I'm Hi. a ghost for Ghostbuster. Got it. Love it. We have just enough time for two more questions, one Nicely from this done. side and Nicely one from done. that one. Hi, I'm Tyler from Abbotsford, British Columbia. Hey! <laughs> and uh, my brother's going to be insanely jealous. But uh, uh, one of my favorite characters of yours is Buck from the Halo series, ODST and Halo 5. And my question is, what was your favorite part about being a part of the Halo franchise? Uh, playing the game once it's finished. <laughs> yeah, you're in a sound booth. You don't get to do much. Sometimes they let you bounce around with the lies a little bit with the lines. Excuse me, the lies. Uh, or both. So like, there's there's a line for every action. So when when uh, my character is driving the jeep, you as a player can run up and say, "I'm driving," essentially. And I would say things like, "Oh, oh, don't worry about me. I'll walk." I mean, I have a bad knee, but don't <laughs> let it bother you. <laughs> stuff like that. I get to kind of throw that stuff in. But playing the game when it's done, that's my favorite bit. Feet first in the hell. Thanks, man. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm Jeremy. I'm from Linwood, Washington. Okay. So, what's that one story that you've never had a chance to tell at a convention? When I was a kid. you've always wanted to. There was this time. Uh, you know what? The problem is, I'm out of stories. But each event is a chance for new stories to blossom. I, I just hope that you guys haven't heard all my crappy jokes. And I just tell the same stories over and over again. You guys are very forgiving. You laugh at anything. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> See? <Yeah. laughs> we got time for the last one? What? We get time for her. We get time for this young lady. Oh, yay. Go, go, go. Hi, my name is Sam. I came Hi, from Sam. Portland. Hi, Portland. Uh, <laughs> so Joss Whedon is known for killing off 
uh, beloved characters and shows and movies. If it wasn't Wash, and if it were, if it was you, how would whoa, you? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> wow. If it was you instead, how would you have wanted to go? Um, something dignified. Nothing like a stake through my heart. <laughs> By the way, guys, how do reavers clean their spears? They put them through the wash. <laughs> Joss Whedon says, he always says, I get so much flack for killing characters. No one ever says, but you didn't kill, and then lists off the characters I've never killed. Uh, how would I want to go? I would want to go in such a way uh, that like there's no coming back. Like I had, had to be like shot in the head or re head removed or uh, exploded on fire. Something where nobody can come back and pick up where I left off with my role. Yeah, like it's done. Yeah. yeah. Done. No. Yeah. Decapitation it's works. A, there's then. no James Bond here. No one's taking a shot at it after this guy. <laughs> it's over. Thank you. That was a great last question. And Nathan, thank you. Thank I you mean, it's been a long time coming to Seattle. You guys, Nathan Fillion! Stand back, everyone. Nothing here to see. Just imminent danger in the middle of it, me. Yes, Captain Hammer's here, hair blowing in the breeze. The day needs my saving expertise.